I want to talk about a natural remedy for an anaphylactic shock from a severe allergy. And usually they use what's called an EpiPen, which they inject into your muscles, and that's epinephrine. And epinephrine has some very unique uh, functions in that it can dilate the bronchial tubes. It can open up the coronary artery. It relaxes the smooth muscle. It increases more blood flow to the muscle and smooth muscle, and it increases the heart output. So it counteracts these very severe allergies. But there are contraindications for EpiPens. So what is the person to do if they have this anaphylactic shock, uh, if they have an overactive thyroid, if they have diabetes, or a disease that sounds like Parkinson's, but it's not. It's another disease called Parkinsonism. And then also, uh, if you have glaucoma, can't take epinephrine or high blood pressure or angina, or if you have cardiac heart disease, okay? So I want to give you an alternative, but let me just run through some of the symptoms. Uh, the symptoms can be uh, life-threatening, but typically you'll get itchiness, a rash, your eyes might swell, your lungs will tighten up to the point where you can't breathe, your throat can tighten up, your tongue can severely swell where it can obstruct your breathing. Get shortness of breath, lightheadedness. You may even have a loss of consciousness, low blood pressure, or you might go into shock. And this can happen from an insect bite or some insect venom, or it could be from nuts like a peanut or seeds like in sesame seeds or milk, shellfish, fish, eggs, sulfites, which is in dried fruit, it's in red wine byproducts of fermentation. So if they took nutritional yeast or apple cider vinegar, sourdough bread, also it can come from antibiotics, dyes, latex, exercise can trigger an anaphylactic shock in certain people, as well as side effects from vaccines. It's really weird that we have these allergies. We're rejecting something from the environment. And then when we come in contact with that thing, it can create all sorts of uh, negative reactions and they can be very intense. The interesting thing about this is that children that live in a sterile environment when they're raised tend to get more autoimmune diseases and tend to get more severe allergies to the point where you can have an anaphylactic shock because there has been no stress on their immune system to build it up. And the reason I'm bringing that up is we're born with half of our immune system, okay? And then the other half, is acquired. It's called the acquired immune system. And we develop that through being exposed to certain things and then going through the reaction and having our immune system being stressed, getting sick, recovering, and then now being prepared and bulletproof. It's kind of like if you had an army, okay, that were never properly trained, you never stressed out that army. In fact, you probably gave them stress cards. And then you also never put them through basic training. You made it very easy for them. And so when they're exposed to another army, they will be easily defeated. So this is just another example of how important it is not to be uh, stress-free all the time, especially with a child. I mean, children that live on farms that are exposed to a lot of microbes, children that have pets have a much better immune system. So if your child gets sick, don't think that's a bad thing. If your child gets sick often, don't try to quickly suppress the fever or the cold or the sinus problem. Let them go through this immune system with good nutrition, but don't think it's a bad thing. What's a bad thing is living in a sterile environment for too long. All right, now let's get to some of the remedies for an anaphylactic shock. And the first one is called FAHF2, okay? It's a combination of nine Chinese herbs. I mean, it's double-blinded, placebo-controlled clinical trial tested against peanut-induced anaphylaxis, and it stands for Food Allergy Herbal Formula. Real easy to remember, and uh, you can seek out this formula and get it if you have an anaphylactic shock and just keep it ready, because if it can help you with a peanut allergy, chances are it can help you with other types of uh, anaphylactic shock reactions. You know, there's a lot of Chinese herbs out there that have been known to help anaphylactic shock, uh, severe hypersensitivities. And so here are some other ones, uh, sweet chestnut, 
um, Asian rose. And the third one is hardy orange. So if you can't find one, maybe you can find something else as a backup, but it'd be important to keep this you know, close by you in case you run into a situation. And of course, what I'm telling you right now, check with your doctor before implementing, because I'm not telling you not to use an EpiPen, okay? Just want to point that out. The next four remedies I'm going to talk to aren't necessarily to handle an emergency anaphylactic shock, okay? They're mainly to reduce the sensitivity over time. So it doesn't keep creating an anaphylactic shock or a severe hypersensitivity. So number three is called oral immunotherapy, okay? And the effectiveness is like 60 to 80% in which you're giving a person a very small dose of the thing that they're allergic to over months, okay? So there's a certain amount that you can give a person that they don't have any reaction. And so you give them that amount supervised by a doctor, and then you slowly increase it to the point where you're now tolerant of that, that substance. Okay, so that's one kind of natural therapy. And number four, vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important to build the immune system up. Uh, it's really a steroid. It's, it acts like cortisol, but it's an immune modulator. So it tends to regulate the immune system, which is exactly what you need to do. All right, number five, fasting has been known to significantly reduce hypersensitivities and allergies because it corrects the immune system. Now, I would recommend doing a three-day fast once a month. If you get anaphylactic shock for whatever allergy and you did a three-day fast every month, and then you also did routine intermittent fasting, I think you would see significant improvements just from that alone. And the last thing I want to mention is probiotics. Um, here's the thing. Right now, there is current research being done on developing certain type of probiotics that can greatly reduce allergies and even the intensity of anaphylactic shock. So the exact formula of which microbes or beneficial microbes you would need to take is just unknown right now. I think any probiotic would be better than no probiotic. I mean, think about what the side effect of an antibiotic is. Allergies, that's one of the side effects. And even anaphylactic shock. So probiotics are important since 80% of our immune system resides in our colon. And since allergies are related to the immune system, you should check out my video I did on doing fasting to strengthen your immune system. And I put that one right up here, check it out.